Okay, so the focus of this video is going to be on how do you take data from a scientific data set or a data set that you've created and make it into something that is meaningful or useful in terms of a paper for maybe your job or for your MPH project or a dissertation. So you've got the statistical tools before you, what do you do with them? So there's a variety of things that you can do, but often you should have some variables in mind that were informed by maybe your background search, your introductory kind of information that usually would go with any paper on why you selected these variables, what biological basis was there with the outcome of interest, whether it be a disease or something, you know, that's a good thing. What reasons did you have for choosing it? Was it something that you knew or thought would likely happen or something you saw in the other papers? Um, is it a potential confounding variable that may influence your results so you had to adjust for it? So those types of things should go into a paper. Also, who are you studying? Like, what's the population you're dealing with? So what are some of the summary statistics on the whole population? How many people are in your study that you know, so once you do the study, how many people are in it? So statistics often are used, sometimes viewed as something on the back end, but before you even ever do statistics on the back end, you should already have in mind how you're going to use those statistics or those statistical tools at the beginning. And you can even use statistics at the beginning to inform sample size and all of that. But in the event that you're downloading data like we've got here, you didn't have much say in the data collection process. But what are the things that you can do? So previously, we've already talked about you can do summary on you know things like low birth weight or whatever. And you can get this kind of information that can be useful for then taking that information and putting it into a table that you have already created. And I've put a top line and a bottom line on there and a bottom line down here so that I'm going to be able to copy and paste this into a Word document. Now, you may need or want more statistics for your summary statistics than what's provided here. So if you have the ability to install packages, which you should, I would recommend installing the psych package, which I've already got installed. So if you click that, you know, and then after all the red text runs on it, then run the library, you know, psych, now this one doesn't have quotes on it. You would install or run that, create that library thing, right? And then you can actually use this command, describe. Describe doesn't exist unless you install that psych package or another package that uses that describe terminology. So when we describe using the psych package with low birth weight, we get more of the things that a paper would often want to see, which would include N the number of samples or people or county information in this case, how many counties have low birth weight information? 3,035. We've got the mean, we've got the median, we have a trimmed mean, which most papers are, are, may not care about. We have the minimum and the maximum and the, you know, and the range, how wide the range is, so, you know, so how much kind of distribution is there. Skewness and kurtosis values are also provided. Sometimes people report the mean plus or minus the standard error that's right there. So that kind of information could be built into a table like this. And to date, I don't think they've made it yet in our studio where it just automatically makes the table for you, um, you know, the way that a paper would want it. Every journal is going to have their own format and the norms and and, uh, and you as an author, what you want to put in there or not, or as a co-author. So once you have all the information, you would then be able to take your Excel sheet that I had been creating over here. I copy the information and then, you know, you might have a table one, you know, summary statistics for, you know, whatever you call it and then you paste your table in. And then here I can see I, you know, I need to add a top line there. And then these would have information in them. Usually these things are oriented to the left uh, in scientific papers. That range value, you know, 
let's get it a little bit better there. And once you populate this information, this is how a table often would look in a scientific paper. Now, the next table that we'll do may involve correlations of all of these different things. So we would create for table two in our Excel file, or in a, you know, just kind of our Excel scrap paper here. We've got our Excel scrap paper, so you know, we have variable, and then you might have, you know, all of these different things that you're comparing against, and you may actually um, give them little acronyms or something like that. So LBW, FEI, HHI, smoke, percent black, percent HS, grad, you know, teen, rape, child, pov, PCT, insure or something. And then down here, you would then take all of these variables because what we're getting ready to do is you would then be able to create your own correlation matrix where you show which ones are statistically significant one for one another. Now, there's no immediate R Studio program that does all this for you. There's a little bit of labor involved in writing a paper. Um, that's part of the part of the life, you know. So but we can then create a correlation table here that compares all of these different things. Now, you may be troubled by, you know, which correlation approach should we use? Should we use Spearman? Should we use Pearson? And I would, you know, sometimes, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard one, but if your main emphasis of your paper is like low birth weight here and you do the Shapiro Wilk test on something like it. Shapiro test, low birth weight, and you get a value that looks like that, or you do a histogram on low birth weight, you know, and you can see the value on this one was 0 0.933. It's way below 0 0.99. The p value is less than 0 0.05. You know, it's that's not too too horrible off of a bell curve, but it's definitely not a bell curve. Um, so you may be leaning towards doing a Spearman correlation test, and you know you have to then type in you know the core dot test, and then what are you going to compare with? And some stat programs are really easy, and I'm sure there's one that you could download that would allow you to do all these at once. But um, here, the first one is low birth weight. Now, we're not gonna compare low birth weight versus low birth weight, or if you want to, we can, um, because it's per a perfect correlation, right? Low birth weight versus low birth weight. And then we have to also tell it to do the um, Spearman correlation for this. So I have to remember exactly you know, the comma C Spearman. Okay, so I double check my notes. So, all right, method equals, and then C parentheses Spearman. And Spearman has to be in lowercase. If it's in uppercase, it won't work. So it's doing it, it can't compute it with ties, but we see the correlation is significant. We're looking for the row value, so it's a one. Well, obviously it's a one because we're comparing low birth weight versus low birth weight. Now, once you've got that command, I can just hit up, right? I hit up, and then that allows me then to just one by one, I can go through these, and the first one on my Excel sheet that I want to populate, if I can find which Excel sheet I had here, there it is, the first one. So, I mean, obviously, we can just leave that one blank, and anything over here can be blank. So, the first one we're going to do is food environment index. Food environment index. And then I hit enter and there's a negative relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. So it's a food environment index is better. 
the low birth weight rate goes down. It's an ecologic study, so it's county level, not individual, but we would then take that information here and you can put in negative 0 0.448. Negative 0 0.448. And we usually put the zero, we put the zero in front of decimals to make it easier on our readers unless the journal doesn't want it. And it was significant. So you can do bold and italics or something like that on that particular one. How do I know it's significant? Well, it depends on your rules that you're going to use, but here, you know, it's very clear that it's less than 0.001. There are a variety of ways. You could do bold for things that are less than 0.05, and then you could do bold italics for things that are less than 0.01. So you would then be able to populate this whole thing by going one by one and doing these correlations. Now, when you get here, you're not going to need to complete it because everything that's going to be above and on this side of the diagonal, you'll have already done all those correlations. You only have to do half of these boxes. And it's a nice way of being able to show your results. So the second one we would do, we would go down and do household income versus low birth weight. Eventually, we would do food environment index versus household income. So correlations are a nice thing for you to be able to show. And then you may get to the point where you're going to develop a statistical model, right? So what will go into your model? Well, you'll probably have all your significant variables or variables that were at least um, had a correlation better than a p-value a less than 0.15, marginally associated or better. But when you develop your model, you're going to have, you know, model, you know, I'll just call it model new is equivalent to LM and then what's our X variable or our Y variable? Low birth weight and then squiggly line to say, okay, here are our predictors and we've got food environment index plus household income plus adults oh I'm, I'm reading it off of the thing so the, now we got smokers if I can find plus smoke there it is smokers plus um, percent African American I think plus I've got this like uh, HS graduation rate. That's the high school graduation rate. All right, teen birth weight or birth rate plus child po children in poverty plus something about insure. You know, um, uninsured, I guess. Uninsured A, I know we've got information on. All right, so I run that model. I need to look at the model. Summary. Model new. Are all my terms significant? Household income is not a significant variable here. So I would get rid of that. All the other variables do a better job explaining it. So you would denote that you put all these variables in there. Household income was not a statistically significant contributor to this model. So I would delete that. Rerun the model. Check it again. Do the summary on this new model. All the terms in the model are significant. Um, they're all less than 0.05. In fact, they're all actually less than 0.001. Our R square is 62.72%, our adjusted R square. So what goes in to making your paper for this? How would you put this into a paper? So I'm going to show you in the next video how you would go about doing that, assuming you want to keep this model as is. So we'll stop there.